Okay, um, I think I'm live, uh, but I am putting all my settings back to where they were. I just thought I'd get live again. This is the, the uh, default. Sheesh. Tell you guys to refresh. Wow. I have no clue what just happened. Let's see, oh, let's keep it there. That's a little more tolerable. Yeah, that was um, kind of scary. <laughs> no warning, my computer just shut off. No update, it wouldn't do that when I was doing something any anyway. Um, And we're back. Yeah, like everything else was fine. Like all the other plugs that it's plugged to, although the iron isn't, but the iron is, is not at all connected to the computer. Like don't ever do that. Not when you're a live streamer. Okay. Yeah, so I think my, something happened to my iron. But what's weird is the iron is plugged directly into the wall and the computer is on a battery backup. So it shouldn't even be affiliated with one another. Anyway, let's just take this waistband out. Everything looks okay? You can hear me okay? Yeah, it keeps it lively. We don't really need that. <laughs> Oh, your cod showed up. Nice. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thanks for coming back, you guys. That was so weird. It just went. <laughs> All right, so I need to fix this. If it happens again, I'll just end the stream, just so you know, as I'll probably need to get to the bottom of this. It looks like it is affiliated with my iron, which is so weird because... It's directly connected to the wall. I think sometimes those battery backups, you know, like I have one, so if my if the power went out, the stream wouldn't die. Like I have a few minutes, right? Or my computer won't just like go off like that. And um, I think those things are a little finicky sometimes that they will, because remember my old one used to give me an alarm you know, and uh, it would, we were not even, we didn't even lose power. It was so annoying. I switched it out because I was like, okay, this whole alarm thing is, I would have to turn off. It was dumb because you would have to get, to get rid of the alarm, you had to turn everything off. So it's like, okay, um, there's no, you know, power surge. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can ease this in here now. And then we get to do the buttonhole attachment, which I'm kind of, I'm now I'm very excited about. All right, can I get that at all in there? Circle of death, <laughs> exactly. Can I get all that in there? Ooh, I feel like I need to go back a little further. Let's go back a little further. It seemed a little optimistic. I was a tiny bit off at the center here. See that? Now I'm a lot off. Oh, and we were talking about like my the gift sewing streams idea. Yeah, so so Beverly, yeah, exactly. You have the that you gave me that bowl idea. Um so I think that that might be a fun one. I can probably find a free pattern for that. I'm hoping. And then, that is so much to ease in there. Why is that? It's so much to ease in there. I'm gonna make it so that I have to be okay by here. 
That's kind of mean to myself, but you know, I'm not being very kind to my current self. Okay, almost. It's barely off now. All right, cool. That's a lot easier. It's, I think it's the angle. Okay. Much better, much better. Hey, Janet, how's it going? <laughs> I don't even got, think I got to say hi to some of you before. I need to move this over. I can't see the chat. There we go. The soap, soup bowl. Okay, all over Pinterest. I don't have Pinterest. Pinterest is, is like, whew. All right, I'm down. I've been thinking about this little juncture some more. I didn't really give myself enough room here. Or I, I gave myself enough room. I, it seems very narrow. So let's make sure our waistband is the same gigantic size from left to right. <laughs> right, because it needs to match. And this one is a little longer. So if we matched it from the bottom up like this, Oh, well, now it matches. What? Let's make sure. It's kind of a check now or forever hold your peace type of thing, you know? These things look kind of funky, don't they? I mean, that's... Okay, I think it could be a little straighter right there, you know? That's one thing you don't consider is that this is matching up like two inches in. And you're at a curve here, you know? So I think more accurately, it should look like this. I'm going to go one stitch past and then blend it in. Like that. Okay, cool, Beverly, thanks. Oh man, sorry, my pants keep getting caught on the corner of the table there. Really annoying. Let's take out a few of these stitches here. Blend it in. All right, so my other ideas were, um, so feel free to chime in on any of these, you guys, because I want to make things you're actually kind of interested in. Um, the Grain Line um, Studio has a free pattern weights pattern, and I thought it would be nice to give ourselves a free gift, you know, or a little gift for the season. <clears throat> or if you have a friend who's a sewist in your life. And then um, my other one was... Oh yeah, the pajamas. We were talking about the pajamas when the stream died. Um, there is a robe pattern by Love Notions I picked up in that one of those recent $5 Fridays called the Compose Robe. Or maybe it's free. No, I think it, it was $5. I think it's called Compose Robe. That looks kind of cool. Uh, but that one's not a free pattern. And then Funky Friends Factory has a free teddy bear pattern. If anyone's looking to do some stuffed animal making. I just see all this and I want to get rid of it because that'll be a problem if the seam is inside the other one like that. So let's make sure it actually isn't like that. Let's, let's double check this. Those are just loose threads. Acceptable, acceptable. Where's the one? Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm just making sure this right here blends in nice. All right. So now let's do our final thing. 
So that means I have, um, so far, Sam Apron, PJs, Teddy Bear, Pattern Weights, Rice Neck Warmer, and, and Soup Bowl Warmer Holder, Soup Bowl Holders. So I want you guys to tell me what you're interested in. <laughs> Unless you're just not, you know. Um, the other thing I can do is just sew Christmas gifts with you guys because I have a few that I want to sew. Like I'm going to make my mom another hillside tote by Noodlehead because she saw my green ideal bag and she was like, I want that same exact purse you made me in that green fabric. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Um, that would be totally doable. <clears throat> I have two Fairfield button ups to sew. I am going to make a rice neck warmer for my mom and my daughter because I think she would get a kick out of it. Um, what else? Oh, and I was going to make my daughter and her roommate pajama bottoms. The thing from Grainline, they're pattern weights, Libby. Let me find you the, the, um, we don't have Malin or a Terrier today. Maybe they're just lurking. Grainline. Studio pattern weights. They're kind of cute. They just look kind of fun and satisfying to make. I like how hers look kind of like pears. <laughs> there you go. Soup bowl thingy. Oh yeah, doll one. Okay. So maybe that's what I'll do this month is just so we'll do some of these free patterns and then the um, my Christmas making. <laughs> that would be really helpful for me, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to be doing it anyway, so. Yeah, the hillside toe. I have made that. It is a video uh, you can look at. I made a couple of those. Very enjoyable pattern to make. I really like noodle head patterns. I think my only gripe is that you don't get pattern pieces. Yeah, we're back, Walter. I don't know what happened. My uh, computer just turned off. But my iron's not on either, and they're not even in the same circuit. So I don't know. Oh, I'm not going to turn this right side out, actually. We're going to go to the, well, we were going to go to the iron, but I don't think I can do that now. That's so interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it is like, the light is off, but it feels hot. Isn't that weird? The light is off. Wait, do my um, surgery and cover stitch work? Oh yeah, so this, um, that uh, plug strip, oh wait. That was the wrong machine to check. Oh yeah, that plug strip died. Wow. Why did it just decide to, I wasn't even ironing when that happened. <laughs> yeah, right, Beverly, exactly. Marjeet says, the Sam apron, soup bowl cozy, noodle head bag. That's your preferences? Okay, okay. I think those are kind of fun. There is a free noodle head purse pattern. God, the name is like on the tip of my tongue. I've looked at it before. It looks kind of cute. I can't change purses on my mom though. We all know that that would be war, you know? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk, but he is doing a uh, this internet called Starlink that I am totally here for. <laughs> I think, I don't know, Beverly, I don't know. Everything else in my shop is fine. Everything connected here was still fine. My mic that's plugged into the computer was still on, but yeah, that has a battery. My Yeti was still on. It was just the computer. Oh, Libby. Okay, so I like that idea, Libby. However, are we making gifts for us or others? 
I'm fine with either. But you know, I just wanna, wanted to point that out. <laughs> this is very dark, huh? I really wish I had my iron right now. So I would press the seam nice and flat. So let's, um, I'll even just do this. I'll press the seam open with my fingers, that'll help. Right, we'll press it open. It's kind of cool how this works sometimes. And then when we press it this way, it'll be more likely to press on the edge of the seam. Like the pattern weights in a sewing machine cover, that would be a nice gift for a sewist, you know, the whole, it's like a nice little bundle. Secret Santa, do you wanna coordinate that Libby? I'm down. It's kind of late, but um, I'm down for that. We could do New Year's gifts. <laughs> You're like, oh shoot, what did I just suggest? <laughs> All right, I didn't put any notches on this waistband. Okay, I like to wrap the seam allowance right here. This is one thing I've found is, see we're looking at the waistband from the outside. This is the right side of the garment right here. Okay, there's my, remember there's my fly right there. All right, and so I'm gonna open this up just so you see this inside. Why is it so blurry? Is it blurry? Is it just me? Sharpness is down. Forgot everything went default. Okay, so, so here's that short little seam right here, right? And so this seam is turned up this one's left hanging down. I wrap this seam allowance over this one. It does seem a little bulky, but what, what is, this is the difference. If you were to push this and fold it up like that one is like this, what happens is you get this one hanging down below and it's kind of hard to manage. So I like to wrap it around. Put all this thread in here. I mean, you could trim this a little bit. I find that's a little iffy too. You don't want to trim this too small because you also don't want threads poking out right here, right? If anything, you could turn this up a quarter of an inch, but I don't think that, yeah, I just think like pushing this, folding it over, wrapping it around like that is the cleanest way to do it. Ooh, I just bent my pen. You see that? Just kidding. <laughs> I need. <laughs> yeah, I've thought about doing something like that, um, but I've been also a part of swaps before, and I can tell what a monumental amount of effort it is to coordinate them because it sounds really fun. I would love to do something like that. Secret snowflake, or whatever you know. I think the most successful ones I've seen are the ones where people pay to be a part of it. Um, and that has other implications, you know? So it sounds really fun though. Maybe we could do it amongst like the Facebook group someday or the Patreon group. That'd be fun too. All right. So now I'm just pinning this up. Is it too dark still? I could zoom in too. But you know what I'm gonna do first, actually? This will cut down the fiddle factor. Um, this waistband's really, really wide, obviously. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pin, make this nice and flat along these two edges. I'm gonna pin closer down here, just to stabilize this whole section here. That'll make it a lot easier. Should've already done that. 
<laughs> this reminds me of this pair of pants I designed in high school that I completely forgot about. It was uh, made out of a re reversible fabric. It had a wide waistband like this. And it, the pants gathered to it. I'm trying to remember what the closure looked like. Um, and I made a little, like, kind of bolero style jacket that matched in the same fabric and I'd wear it over a certain top or something. Um, but I remember when I went to my like interview with admissions at FITM, you know, I wore my whole outfit that I designed and made, <laughs> you know, so adorable. And it was, you know, it wasn't great. <laughs> Let's be clear. It wasn't great, but I was so proud of it. You know what I mean? Like I was just so proud of it. I wonder what my mom thought when I was like, I'm wearing this. Ouch, jeez, I keep poking myself and it's really annoying. Okay. Stop poking me. It's just so wide. Okay. Mm. One more right here. I can feel that stabilization there and it feels actually really good. I might do that for other things someday. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a few pins on my waistband and then we'll stitch it shut and it'll be done. And then I'm gonna do that buttonhole attachment. I'm kind of excited about. I really hope it goes as smooth as it looked it would. <laughs> Dare I say they look the M word? But no one's going to see, right? It's kind of like, you know, the Itch to Stitch Mountain View. People are like, those look like maternity. <clears throat> and, um, but say what you will, pull on jeans have their place. Look at Jag, you know? They've, uh, They've done, definitely done a good job. Jag, and what's the other pull on jean company? Okay. What are you guys all sewing? Are you guys doing any gift sewing this year? The whole, you know, mailing things to people is so dicey that maybe people will um, not do that as much this year. But I also think, like, if you don't want to risk ordering something that might not make it, you're kind of in the same boat, you know? What are you saying, Walter? Oh, I actually have it. Oh, no, I don't anymore. Hugh. Oh, is that the name of the, another jeans company that does it? I haven't heard of that one, actually. Interesting. And they do, like, they kind of have that vibe, you know. But they don't feel that way, and they're so flattering for other reasons. Like, I really like not having a zipper fly on the front. Since my, because between my backwards hip tilt and my belly, my belly pokes out even more right there. And um, it, uh, having, not having any kind of closure along the front is great. And you rarely wear jeans with <laughs> any marks. I hear you. Exactly.
Oh, nice, Carrie. A tool belt inst instead of a apron. That I like that idea. Do you have any uh, pattern suggestions? Oh, cool, Delwyn. That bag is really cool. I really like that that bag because it's not a fanny pack. I'm I'm not a fan of a fanny pack. A weekend bag for your daughter who's at uni. Oh, cool. Which one did you pick? I've done the Cascade Duffel. That's actually a really nice bag. You're sewing four nieces for four nieces and nephews. What are you making, Libby? Just all sorts of things? Grandkids PJs? Okay, Fiona, that's awesome. All right, let's do this. So did I, I didn't think I told you guys this. You know how I'm always struggling to find green thread? This is my, this was my only green thread. It's, it's heavy weight. Um, I bought one of those thread packs from Waywack and they're all their greens and it, it came, it's on the shelf over there. I don't think you can see it actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can't see it, but it turned out, it's so great. And I saw someone in the chat, like right after I got it, they said something about that they get those thread packs too. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny that they mentioned that. And I meant to say something at that moment. I for totally forgot. All right. Have to get my needle threaded here. My hands are blue and all I've done is a waistband and a fly. Okay. I really wish my tension looked better when I'm sewing with this top stitch thread. I did forget my label, but <laughs> I don't really care at this point. You made a messenger bag for your nep nephew to use as a diaper bag. Well, that's cute. Owl and sewing cat just called weekend bag. Oh, okay. Cause I've heard the, of the weekender, right? There's a weekender bag. Oh, cute Libby. That's awesome. I love that. All right. I'm not starting up there. I'm starting down here. All these pins. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I put that back seam on there, forgetting I don't have like a belt loop to cover in. <laughs> but I think it looks okay. No one's gonna see this massive thing, right? Let's get our... I need... I, there's too much stuff here. Too much stuff. How's that? Do my cameras don't like this? All right, I'm at the center back. I always start back there. Ow! I sometimes just reach a point where I really hate being poked by pins when it happens a bunch of times in a row. You know, it's like the next one, you just like lose it. I'm on the cusp of that. So I'm coming up to those zipper teeth. And this kind of came out as well. What's this little thread here doing? Okay, that's just loose. All right, that's fine.
Oof, that was really close to a tooth. So anyone partaking of any of all the, the sales? Because I was thinking about a lot of them like go for a while. Did you see all the thread theory patterns are 50% off right now, you guys? <laughs> right, Walter. Those things are pretty handy. Um, I'm thinking about hitting up like a few fabric sales, but Ugh, you know, I like to plan for projects. I don't like to just buy willy nilly. And, um, but they're like, so I was kind of looking to see if I could get suggestions from patterns for style arc. Um, I'll probably pick up one or two thread theory just to have them. Like the Fulford jeans. Sorry, this is so bright. Just trying not to get poked right now so I don't get cranky. And let's see, what else did I save? <laughs> There's like, I have like six people I'm thinking of. I mean, Blackbird's having one. Um... That Nick of Time Textiles is having one. It's like buy one, get one, something like that. I, I hear mixed reviews on the fabrics. I did get some rib from them that's really nice, but I only ordered a yard and I got two yards. And so I keep meaning to go back and look at my order like, why do I have two yards of this, you know? It was also really expensive to ship. That's why I'm wondering, okay, I'm approaching more teeth if you guys knew how many times I forgot that I had I'm about to sew through teeth and then I do it and I luck out so I know my luck is running out so I have to pay attention <laughs> okay so here is the teeth right here you can kind of see it's a little worn oh it's really obvious on the camera because it's overexposed it's not actually that bad in person but it's a good sign, and that is actually where the teeth are still. Oh, I made it past. All right. Oh, sometimes you, you will feel like you're hitting a tooth, and you have to be really careful because you don't want to hurt your needle midway with your flat waistband, right? You're most likely, even if you're hand, using your hand crank, if you hit a needle with or hit a tooth with your needle, you're probably going to have to replace that needle at the end of your waistband. You can probably finish your waistband. Um, but the, the ideal is that you feel a little tension, you kind of just push your fabric gently and kind of get your needle to find the path of least resistance around that tooth. This is surprisingly easier to sew in than other waistbands I've had. I can't tell why. <laughs> making it up for it in the pokey factor. Oh, are you taking off, Walter? Have a good weekend. Oh yeah, the Sew House 7. I love those slacks, Danny. They are my go-to weekend pants. Um, I wish I actually had more of them that were not cropped. <laughs> so I, would, I could wear them all year long because I made all mine a little bit cropped. My only uh, warning with that pattern is you have to make sure you have the elastic on hand so don't spontaneously start sewing if you don't have that wide last elastic. I really recommend trying to find the actual width that you need. Because I've not had it and I've pieced it together, it's just not the same. But when you have the actual width, it's really nice. Ow, ow, ow! Mm. Uh, are there any you recommend? Of what do you mean? What recommend of what? Do you live nice? 
What did you end up getting there? They have some good basics and stuff. So I have for my five out of four patterns that I picked out to sew next, I have the Sierra fleece pullover and I have fabric for that, but it's cotton. It's hemp actually, hemp cotton. Um, I have the um, Sydney dress because I'm looking for a Moneta replacement. Um, and I have one other one that I'm, oh, Sophie top, which is their, one of their only wovens patterns. So I had to pick it up. Oh, you got Megan Nelson patterns and kits. Carrie, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I should look at my phone to see who I'm earmarked. All right, let's check these out. Let's see how weird these are. My genie pants. My genie Ames pants. <laughs> I mean, if you want tummy control, I got you covered. <laughs> they actually look okay, though. You know, like if my even if my shirt comes here, it'll just look like a regular waistband. No one's gonna know it goes up really high. Oh, any oh yeah for that, Danny. I am so torn with um, what to review first. I've been talking to someone, the person that kind of inspired me to do this whole pattern review thing. I was talking to her, and I was like, who do I start with? Because I think everyone's eye is gonna be on this, and it's like. So, you know, she was just like, you have tons of patterns you've sewn. Just start with one of those. And I was like, yeah, I could, but I feel like none of them are new, you know? And I don't want to feel like I'm singling anyone out for my first one. I feel like I should come out with three at once. Um, I was going to do jeans. I thought jeans would be great. I'll do a bunch of jeans. But I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to do my first reviews on something as important as jeans. I'm gonna wait till I get my legs under me so that I have like a format, you know? Okay. I, the sewing looks really good. I'm kind of surprised that this doesn't look crazy. Look at the back, they actually look like pull on jeans. I, you know what? I probably could have made these pull on jeans, you guys. If I would have just sewn this shut, I probably could have made these pull on jeans. I didn't want to figure that out though. So this will be fine. All right, so now do I want, um, see this is another thing I'm working on. You see how this got st stretched out? You can even see it kind of going whoop right here. I gotta work on that. I gotta be, pay attention more to that ease this in, maybe even put a stay stitch here so that it doesn't get stretched out. I can see the grain line, so. All right, let's try this buttonhole attachment to calm the down the lighting. Alright, so this is the thing I'm using. See, for use on an industrial machine. So I have a single needle machine that does not do zigzag. And um, I know a few people have one of these and they it works great. Like Terry has one. Um, Alright, and this is the kind of the, the beast of the attachment here. That's interesting. This looks different than the one in the video. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't. Okay, so this is the width and this is, oh no, that's a W, wait, normal? Why, okay, well, let's, here's, yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna put in some regular thread. Oh, 
Oh, let's just leave that unthreaded right now. Okay, so I think the first thing I do is um, I just want to know which one is oh it doesn't show me E special needle setting screw yeah that's like is it this one or this one it's long Okay, let's take away the presser foot. I need to take this needle guard off right here. And this is, um, that so um, I'm taking this sheath that goes like my um, needle goes right in here and then this is like a, cil a cylinder that goes around it <clears throat> and then the last thread guide is right there too so I have to take this whole thing off Hoping that it comes off the way they made it look like it does. He didn't show this part, of course, right? Oh. Thought I was getting it off, but I'm not. It's really tight. Will I be able to get that back on there? <laughs> oh, it's getting, is it coming? Oh yeah, it's coming, okay. I'm ruining my fingernails for this. Okay, this right here. That's my last thread guide right there. Okay. So now I want to know, I think he replaces it with this one. Slot for presser bar. Come over here. Take away the presser foot and the needle clamp screw from the sewing machine. Instead of the needle clamp screw, use the special needle setting screw. Supply with the button holder to set the needle. Special needle setting screw E. Is it this one or this one? riveting right I can't get either one of these to go into that hole is it this it's not this right I don't know what this is right here. Special needle setting screw. I mean, I don't 
understand. Like, how are you supposed to understand this drawing right here? That is that what I removed, or is that what I'm putting back on? <laughs> you know. Okay. I'm going to look at this because this will also help me determine I want this slide when I have it off. There we go. Okay. Okay, there we go. Obviously not doing a how-to yet on this. Okay. I need to figure out the, um, I just want to see what screws work other places so I know which one to put there. But one of these has to hold my needle. And I cannot get this screw into this hole. Like it feels reverse threaded. You know? Yeah, that's not going. It's too big. Okay, so is it this one? Wait, where's the other one? Like this fits over this, I think. You know? Yeah, that fits over that so perfectly. All right, let's just try this. All right, yeah, that feels right. Okay, so it's the one with the little box around it, okay? Because uh, now my needle can go in this hole and the screw is holding my needle in place. Okay. Sydney. <laughs> Clean it up, Carrie. It'll feel less stressful. Oh, right. It's that, that weekend of the year. Yeah, do you, do you, so Tristanus, you put them on by hand? I don't do that. <laughs> I think, you know, maybe someday I will do that, but... Because I, I, I like the way some of those look. I, I've watched a few of those videos. It's pretty cool. And also, I'm just kind of curious about this. Like, the fact that this can make my machine do a zigzag is, that's pretty intriguing to me. All right, so I got that on there. So now I have, let's see. I lift this up.
the presser foot screw out. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. Yeah. It doesn't fit on there very well though. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm not sweaty, you're sweaty. Okay, I'm just checking my alignment of my needle right now. It wants to zigzag. Nice. Okay, we're gonna tighten this down now. More, okay. <laughs> I think that's it. Except I think that I have to put this tightener here. Yeah, that's what it is. Isn't there a screw hole on the side? Oh yeah, okay, there is. Come on, catch, catch. Yeah. Or no, no. <laughs> Let's check to make sure it actually will screw in there first. Oh, it will. Okay. We just got to get it lined up better. It, I can see the hole. It's there. I can't imagine doing this every time I want buttonholes, you know? Maybe if I had, you know, a, a, a separate machine. Like say I had an, a spare industrial, which I know it sounds crazy, but I, I used to have two extras. Um, and you didn't want to spend your money on a buttonholer. Like I, my old machine, I, sh I thought about keeping it just to set up as a buttonholer because it was a $300 industrial. It wasn't, it wasn't valuable. This feels too, let's do that. Oh no, I can't do that. Okay. I can't get it into that hole. Like I see it lined up. Hmm. Let's try it from this side. Cause I can get it right in there. It's okay. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, so this is sitting too high. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like getting into this. Okay, Sydney, cool. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah, right, Fiona? It, well, it, I wouldn't mind doing this if it just went together really easily because, you know, I think it makes a really nice buttonhole is what I see. This is sitting too high. Yeah, it's sitting too high. Okay. What could I do to make that lower? Let me look at the directions to make sure. Okay. Turn the hand wheel to bring the needle to its highest position. Place the button holder from the rear so that the presser bar will fit to the slot for presser bar. <laughs> Make sure that the fork arm lever will rest on top of the special needle setting screw before tightening the two screw to fix the button holder. Before tightening the two. Type two what? What are all these? Oh, this is the just the length and the width. Okay. That's a lot of instructions. <laughs> Can I just get this on here though? You know? Hmm. I can see it's much higher. It's much higher, even though I can see the hole. Right there. It's like a it's like a hair higher, you know. So let's see. Can I make this lower? This thing. I don't know if this see if this thing moves or not. Can you imagine someone designed this? It's kind of incredible, you know? Maybe it's at the wrong angle. Uh, because you know how when I started walking my needle and it was like starting to zig zag back and forth? Maybe it's a matter of needle position making, because this whole thing right here is going like this. I'm determined. Hmm. If I lift up my presser foot, that makes it way too high and it bonks into this whole thing right here. I wonder if this just doesn't work with my machine because I have electronics. I feel like that seems kind of familiar. I wish Terry was here because I think, oh, it feels like it got into the screw. Oh my gosh, did it? It's so close. No, it didn't. Well, I don't know, I just can't get it in there. It's just, uh, this hole is just like, just like a, not even a needle width higher than this hole here. Hmm. What is this right here? Oh, it's styrofoam. 
Yeah, it did, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. These are the instructions, though, so I can't really see what's happening in that illustration. I've got it, I've got every, I'm doing it right, except it's, um, I'm wondering if I'm not missing, I'm missing something about like alignment with other things. I'm a little worried about that styrofoam in there. So this little, all I have to do is put it on there now and then screw this onto it. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, I don't put that in there, no. I just thought of something. It's when you go to do the buttonhole though. See, that's on there. I know, I was wondering if I'd see today, Nancy. Yeah, it was pretty, the, the, so far it's been pretty easy. All I had to do is remove the thing that holds um, the last step of threading for my needle. Like this is right at the above of my, of my needle. I had to remove that, that was kind of hard to slide off. Um, and then you just set this uh, little plate, you line it up with the, you know, you get your needle back in the center and put this centered over the hole that the needle goes into um, and then you screw it down this little cover plate because there's no feed dogs now and then you rest this on top of the new thing that holds the needle every time I do this it kind of see how it moves oh it's getting closer and closer Oh, this is pretty nifty. Let's put it way back there. I have to pivot it on to get it around there. Oh, okay, let's see. Does that lower it or raise it at all? No, not really. So I feel like that raises it. So let's put it all the way to the back. Yeah, that lowered it a little bit. But I can still see that the, the hole is not quite. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay, I think this is possible. I have to hold the presser foot up a tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, that wasn't hard. Okay, so I just have to hold the presser foot up a tiny bit to get the hole to line up. Okay. <laughs> right, Nancy, I know. Now, uh, so far I'm not like intruding on anything that the machine normally does. Okay, so I think we're set to sew now. I got this on here. Um, okay, so I did this needle camp screw and so this use a special needle set. Okay, place the cover plate on right here. Make sure your needle's in the center. Um, turn the hand wheel to bring the needle to its highest position. Place the buttonhole from the rear so that the presser bar will fit to the slot. Okay. And then this foreground level will rest on top of the special needle setting screw before tightening the two screws to fix the buttonholer. I don't know what two screws are talking about. In the case of the sewing machine, is equipped with a drop feed mechanism. You do not have to use it. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to go. Let's do it. We're not gonna turn it on quite yet. <laughs> This needle feels so loose in here though. Makes me a little nervous. Mm. 
Okay, that feels way better. Okay. Use your screwdriver. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me get some fabric. <laughs> Are you guys ready for this? Um, I think I want some canvas. There we go. Yeah, me too, Nancy. But I also feel like I heard someone say, and I think it was Layla Sos from Muna and Broad. I feel like she's the one who said, oh, this isn't good for one with electronics or vice versa. And I remember thinking, oh, well, that rules mine out. Okay, so I don't have the... Um... Yeah, see, I can't lift my presser foot up. <laughs> it's kind of a problem. How am I supposed to get my fabric in there if I can't lift my presser foot up? You know? I can get that thin of fabric in there and that's it. One layer of canvas. So that's that's kind of a problem. All right, I'm just gonna start my machine kind of slowly. And then you can go around as many times as you want. So I could change the density of this to make it look a little less. Oh, see now it's doing the center. Oh, oh, it has a whole order of operations. <laughs> What's it doing now? Okay. But I can't lift my presser foot up. You know? I can't lift my presser foot up. All right, so let's adjust the width and length now. Yeah, if I can get if I could get something thicker than that, thicker than this under there. Yeah, Nancy. Do you think this was supposed to be, no, never mind. Okay. Move the buttonhole length adjusting screw, figure three. Okay, so this is the length right here. S. Oh, it's back here. Oh, okay, so this is the length right here. Okay. What? Okay, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll just adjust it for the sake of adjusting it. Except that now it doesn't want to. This is, this sort of feels like a, a $30 attachment. <laughs> okay, that doesn't stay up there. All right, um, maybe I won't adjust this right now. <laughs> it just falls down. Okay, well that's a problem. All right, so we want just the length. Okay, how's just the buttonhole width? Six and seven. Okay, so this is the... narrow buttonhole width so that you'll have a wider buttonhole width. This so this is the width of the space between the two rows of zigzagging. That's what this one is right here, I'm pretty sure. The cutting width, that's why it's called cutting space. It's the cutting space. 
Um, no, I don't have an option to drop my feed dogs. That's why there's this protective plate here. Pretty sure. Yeah, so mine has a... Because I have electronics, this is why I think this isn't compatible with the machine with electronics. Because I have an automatic presser foot lifter, it's interfering with the machine to allow me to raise and lower. Uh, but I'm a noob here. I don't know what I'm doing or talking about quite yet. So maybe I will discover something that is um, compatible. All right, how to adjust the zigzag width, figure four. Look at that figure. <laughs> What's going on in there? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Move the zigzag width adjusting screw between N and W. Then you will have narrow zigzag. Okay. I want the length of the zigzag. The density. That's all I care about. Number eight. Figure eight. Oh, they call that the uh, stitch width right here. It's it's uh, the density of the zigzag. Okay, and that one is the butterfly screw. What? Really? Oh, it's this one here. Okay, okay. All right, well, I don't know how much is a lot, so we'll just do a little bit. Oh, I wanted to see what the back of this looked like. Oh, I have blue thread on the back. I feel like I'm cheating by doing that. So let's put on um, some white thread. So we can see it, you know? Don't be surprised if you see this for sale on my website today. <laughs> okay. Ow. Where's the hole? There it is. I cannot see it. Okay. This one's not going to look good because um, I just changed my thread. Okay, so that's not dense. <laughs> Clockwise, you will have a tighter stitch. Counterclockwise, you will have a looser and wider stitch. Okay, that was too much. Oh, wow, that is very sensitive. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I feel like there's not really a, um, there's not really a starting and stopping spot. Looks like a hot mess back there. Let's do two layers. Can I even get two layers under here? Oh, I can't. See, this is kind of, uh, doesn't work for my machine. Well, that's kind of a bummer, isn't it? It's not even sewing now, okay. Hey, Terry, how's it going? I finally am doing this. Oh, look at that, that's my problem. Um, and I don't think it's working with my machine because I've, uh, I can't, I can't lift it up. Hey, Gregory, how's it going? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I'm still camp machine sew it, but I, I do have a machine that sews buttonholes. I just thought this would be kind of cool to see if it worked, you know? All the hand sewing buttonhole people are in the chat today. Give me a break. There's not really more than two of you are there. I'm just teasing, okay? I'm just teasing. <laughs> you try doing this live. <laughs> See, then it does this whole straight stitch routine. It knows, like, what it's doing. 
this kind of reinforces it on the inside of the zigzag, I think. Do I know when it stops? That's kind of an interesting buttonhole look, you know? When is it going to start doing the zigzag again? <laughs> It sounds so cool, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to turn up the brightness. Yeah, right, Nancy? Those are things that are really cool. Uh, no, Terry, because look, like when I lift up my presser foot, it, it won't go because this right here is in the way of the contraption. So this right here is what um, lifts up my presser, pre presser foot. I do have a lever up here, but usually I'm using my heels. And um, this is fixed to my machine right here. So I can't move this. So yeah. I guess I'll stick to my home sewing machine. I need a straighter edge. There we go. I can't even go in that far either. So when does it get back to the zigzagging? There it is. I mean, that, that made it a little closer together, but not really. When is it going to go back to the zigzagging? There must be like a reset, like every time you do it. So Terry, when you use this, um, well, yeah, Gregory, <laughs> a computer, you don't need computerized. I would just get, if you really need one, just look at the industrials. You don't need computerized. That's a, that's kind of over the top. And let, I don't know what you're sewing, but the industrials are really nice and you may end up spending a couple thousand dollars on it. <clears throat> uh, I guarantee it's less, whatever it is, it's less than the computerized. Unless what you mean by computerized is electronic. I'm not sure. I've never shopped for a buttonhole machine. Um, so I don't know, but um, it is very simple operation. Like there, it, when you press down on your foot pedal, it just does it. You set it up and it does it. So it, it is very much automated. So the, there's two foot pedals. The left one raises and lowers the presser foot and the right hand one just starts it and you just punch it and then you just, it goes. <laughs> it should be zigzagging, right? So I, it, it was earlier, we did get like, if you want to call that a buttonhole. So maybe I adjusted something. Cause counterclockwise. You will have a tighter stitch counterclockwise. You will have a looser and wider stitch. You also note the butterfly screw, which turns only to the left, it is used to set the starting point of the stitches and also used to ascertain the length of the buttonholes before stitching. did not want to be disappointed by this. I just can't. Okay. I If I move this all the way, I think I have a little bit more room with the presser foot. That's it. Okay, I'm 
going to try this screw going this way now. There we go. We've got our butt, our, our zigzag back. Nope. And then we lost it again. Maybe I'm not going fast enough. Boy. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know, Satrishonist. <laughs> I had such high hopes too, I know. I mean, I didn't, I actually didn't have high hopes for this and I didn't really want to admit that. Um, I really wanted it to work, but I just know when you're trying to make your machine into something it's not, it's kind of dicey. And uh, the world just is not, for some reason, ready to give home sewists a dedicated buttonhole machine that's not industrial. So, yeah. But if you want to see a, an industrial buttonhole machine in action, you can look at that on um, on YouTube, on the Wish app. No, I don't know what the Wish app is. I've heard of it. No, I just bought it from Waywack, I think. It's very affordable. Or maybe I bought it on Amazon. Maybe I bought it from Waywack on Amazon. Yeah, hers was defective and they sent her a new one and it was fine. She had got the rare defective one. <laughs> there was something about it. I should ask her what it was. But it, I bought this like in May. I should have checked it right away. But it just doesn't compatible because my machine is uh, elect has electronics and automatic, you know, presser foot lowering and raising. This thing right here will not stay adjusted. It's like, doesn't do anything. It's really weird. It feels really weird. There's like, maybe, uh, I don't know. Okay, I didn't get enough fabric in there. Ooh, that was the most space I've had. Look at this screw, it's so loose. I'm not, I'm just not getting any zigzag. I'm not getting any zigzag, oh well. <sighs> Well, I'll, maybe I'll play with it some more. There's not a whole lot of information about these. I was kind of hoping that maybe I could help folks out once I got the hang of it, but I don't think I can. So this right here is the depth of stitching. This is the space between the two rows. This is the length right here of the buttonhole. Um, right here, this little vertical black screw, not the butterfly, but the but vertical one is the density of stitching. And then this one right here, I'm not sure what that is again, actually. I don't know what depth of stitching means. Um, which one refers to figure four? A wider zigzag width. Oh, it's just the width of the legs. Okay, so this one is the width of the legs. So if I put it theoretically down this way more, it'll be wider. And if I'm not getting any zigzag right now, maybe that'll help. I don't know, we'll see. I must have adjusted something. I'm just not getting any zigzag. 
I have a feeling it's something like look at this angle that this is at. I mean, that doesn't want to move at all. This thing is is like stuck at one length. All right, I'm done with this. Yeah, my presser foot's down, because look, if I if I press with my back heel, that's up and that's down. <laughs> On a neck oh vintage necky. Necky, necky. Yeah, I think that's the thing to do. I think the thing to do, if you're if you're setting yourself up with a shop, if you're really budget tight, I would buy a used industrial machine and I would uh, put one of these on there. You know, just an older industrial machine that doesn't have electronics. Those are very affordable. Like I just sold one for $300. Um, it worked great. It was a great machine. In fact, he's using that machine in the video and I was like, oh, my old machine. <laughs> Um, it wasn't mine actually, but the same one it was a 5550 Juki. But um, if you're really setting yourself up, you're going to get a dedicated buttonholer and you're doing a lot of buttonholes if you're in that camp. That's a lot of buttonholes to have a dedicated machine. I would probably figure out with a mechanic, I would just ha hire a mechanic to install this and get it working properly on a machine you don't have to take it off of. That would be my advice. Not that you're looking for it. That's almost what I did. I just didn't want to have to have two industrials in here for occasional buttonholes, you know, um, especially since I'm upstairs. And while I didn't actually have to carry it upstairs, there is a like so-called, like, uh, you know, accessible way to get up here. It is a very long way away. So uh, that would be my advice. Um, cause it would be a really affordable way to have a buttonhole attachment or dedicated buttonhole machine without a whole lot of investment. And then you can find out like, okay, is this something I want to spend a lot? Cause the way I would look at it is how much am I paying for every buttonhole this thing creates? Like if you had an alterations shop, the thing to do is you need to just watch for businesses closing up and then you get their machines. That's but the best way, this is the thing I'm worried about getting back onto my machine right now is this little, oh, that was easy. Phew, I was kind of nervous about that. Let's see if I can get it in the right spot. There we go. Okay, good. I was a little worried about that. <laughs> All right, and then where is, this is, this, is this my presser foot? This looks like my presser foot. Yeah. I don't usually have to thread the screw on here from scratch. If you have to buy a brand new buttonhole machine, um, it's gonna be hard to find a used one, I think, but um, if you have to buy a brand new one right now, it's probably gonna be really hard too because of the delays and you'd have to have that probably sent from Japan depending on where you buy your, where what machine brands you're into. Where's my little needle screw? Here it is. I had to put Phoenix back together. I want this back in the right spot. It's so hard to start this from scratch. Okay. Don't have my phone on silent. Okay, let's hope this needle's still good since we just put it on. Well, that's all I was gonna do today, you guys. What time is it? It's already 1.30. Oh, clear view cover stitch foot. 
Yeah, sure, Ray. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with it. You didn't want to move that thing near my needle. That's why I put it on a vintage machine. Oh, it was hard, Terry. You missed it. I was a little nervous about it. It, it, it ended up being fine. It was just a, it's like a, a really tight um, sleeve. And um, I was telling him, I was like, I was using my fingernails and pushing and it actually, my machine was off and the presser foot was down. The presser foot was gone, uh, but it was down mechanism. And when I was pushing this down, it was pulling my needle arm down the, this. <laughs> it was pulling it down. So I thought I was getting it off and I wasn't. It was just pulling. So once it got all the way to the bottom, when it got down to here, then I could pull it off. Just so you know, it wasn't that bad. And it was a lot easier to get on than it was to get off. <laughs> All right, let's make sure she's uh, she's sewing okay. Sorry. We were trying to make you more than you need to be. Oh, here's my other tip. <laughs> if, you're, if you are wanting an industrial machine and um, you haven't bought one yet, I would explore industrials that do zigzag because there are some out there that um, sew straight stitch and zigzag. I've had one, it was an amazing machine. I think it was the Bernina Chandler, very old. <laughs> it was a long time ago that I had it. Um, but here's the other thing is like, if you find only a zigzag machine, think of it this way, it's worth trying it because you can zero out the zigzag and then you'd have a straight stitch machine. I don't know how well it sews that way, so I would check it. But a zigzag machine, machine, essentially, you can adjust the width of the zig and zag, right? So if you put it down to zero, essentially, then it's a straight stitch. So um, I would, that's what I would do. And, and I kind of kicked myself, because I didn't know when I bought this that I was only going to be streaming. When the fire happened and I had to close my business because, well, I lost all my production. <laughs> like my p capacity to do production. I couldn't sew everything myself, so I closed my business. It was doing really good. It was just, I didn't want to burden the people that worked for me to have to go to work because they lost their homes and their machines. So um, I just said, you know what? Get your life in order, whatever, do what you gotta do. Um, and I'm gonna close my business. And so I did that. And I was live streaming on the side for the, like I had been doing it for like three months. And so I had to coincidentally buy a machine towards the beginning of my stream. I think there's like two streams with my original machine. Um, and I needed it to still sew what I was sewing at my factory, at my business. And so that's why I got this, because it's an exact replacement. It's my very first brand new machine ever, industrial. So, but had I known that I was gonna be streaming full time and maybe needing the versatility of ZigZag, I probably would have, if I would have thought of it, it took me a long time to even think of that idea. So that's probably what I would do. Anyway, um, if you're new here, I'm Sarah Me, so welcome. And also I just uploaded a new video that I would love for everyone to watch. It is on the long side, but I have put so much heart and soul into this video and it's about like what you expect from a pattern because I did this poll recently on Instagram. I would love any honest feedback on it. Um, I feel like it's a really good conversation and um, I worked, I probably spent 50 hours minimum on that video because I re-recorded it and re-recorded it. I wrote a script, I rewrote a script, I rewrote a script, <laughs> I re-recorded it. I really wanted to get it right because I felt like I had some really good information people probably have never heard before about home sewing and patterns and um, I really want to help folks patterns really well and I really want to also kind of bridge this gap of information between pattern companies and people and kind of get that transparency going and maybe support both entities really well I'm not against either like I'm not against pattern companies at all <laughs> I've been a pattern drafter for a long time longer than I haven't been so um anyway I would really appreciate you guys giving it a shot checking it out seeing what you think if you ever want to chat about some of those things I would love that like literally it's like the type of thing I love to chat about so um, I'm really really loving the comments I'm getting it it made me feel really good because I felt a little bit like okay here it goes I'm gonna put this video out there and there's gonna be some things in here people are gonna be like oh I never knew that and um and I'm not out for the pattern companies either 
Yeah, I'm so glad, Libby. I'm really glad, you guys, because it, it meant a lot for me, and I really needed to say those things uh, because it was really clear by the poll responses that some of those things had never been explained before. Do you, Nancy? Me too. Well, I when I woke up this morning, I only had one comment on my like on my notifications. I was like, dang it, I knew. I know this video is not going to get a lot of views because it's so long and I haven't uploaded a dedicated video in a while. So my, I'm really, and I haven't been streaming as much this past month. So I know YouTube's kind of mad at me in their algorithm way, but I was like, you know what? It's okay. I feel good that I got it out there. But then I actually went to the comments and I had like six new ones. It's just that my phone didn't show them to me. So I was pretty happy. I'm really glad. And, um, yeah. So anyway, just give it a shot if you don't mind. And comment on it as well. It really helps because then it keeps coming up in people's search, hopefully. So it was a lot of stuff. I cut out so many anecdotes. <laughs> and I left in a few because I was like, I can't not say some of these things because I probably sound like I'm pulling this information out of thin air. And I also realized after working on it for so long that there would be a lot of people who would watch it and be like, what does, why does this person have the right to say these things? And I didn't really qualify myself, but I think that, that I'm hoping that, that I really am just out for transparency and information and collaboration and um, helping folks. Um, and I do have a lot of experience. And you know what? That video made me embrace the fact that I do have a lot of experience because sometimes I feel like I downplay it to myself. So, um, but I, when I realized when I wrote, like I kept rewriting certain sections and there was one that I, when I, all of a sudden it came to me to say, you know, I've worked for over 150 pattern companies and I have, and I went, wow, I've worked for over 150 different pattern companies because I did freelance. Freelance gives you a lot of opportunities that you don't get when you're working for one person, but working somewhere employed is really awesome too. So, and I've gotten to do that too, but my, also my experience was very unique because I worked in the industry at a time when there were still some factories here in California, which was really special. So, <laughs> that's awesome, Gregory. Thank you for saying that. I understand a lot of people watched, I was actually watching a Twitch stream last night because my friend's playing this game. And um, I my eyes have been really tired lately. And, and so I've been using this, I finally thought of using the mirror app to put it on my Roku. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. But then yeah, I had to have my phone open and then my it would show up on the screen. So I totally get it, Gregory. <laughs> Did you, Nancy? That's awesome, find your sewing twin. Okay, that's good, Aisha. I'm glad to hear that. But I do think some people don't know that. Like, if that's the very first video you've ever seen of me, it might come off as a little bit know-it-all-ish. And I don't know it all. I really, I, I very clearly do not know it all. I would love to talk with other pattern companies. I, I don't know if you've ever heard, speaking of Layla, because I brought her up a couple times, who owns, who, who's like half of Muna and Brad, this pattern company. Um, you know, I saw her video about this attachment. I couldn't find it today. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard her interviewed about pattern drafting, but she is very candid and um, I really like hearing what she says because uh, she's been in um, fashion school more recently than me. And it sounds like it hasn't changed a whole lot. But I forgot about, I had heard an interview with her and it kind of popped into my head while I was editing. I was like, yeah, she kind of said that, you know. So anyway, anyway, give it a give it a shot. Pause it if you have to. Put it on double speed. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, I talk. I don't talk too slow. At the beginning, I was talked a little slow because I was trying to get my footing. But yeah, I pick up. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, I'm gonna head out. So I think I'll be here next week. I really am working on some things behind the scenes. So um, don't take that I'm not streaming that I'm not working. Not that you guys care, but you know, you're not my, you're not, you're not like overlords. <laughs>
Yeah, right, Nancy? She's more transparent about than it, than, than a lot of folks. I would love to interview different pattern companies. I wonder if I could do that and ask them like the same questions. Oh, thanks, Sandy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I've never worked in the home sewing industry though. So, and I'm very transparent about that. But I think that that's, you know, sometimes you have to see things from another outside that box to know that there's other possibilities. And so maybe bringing a bit of the garment industry into the home sewing industry, maybe it could help it. Maybe it wouldn't, I don't know. Yes, Libby. It's almost two, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I have time to eat, right? I don't know, Nancy. It, that's not what YouTube tells me. <laughs> it tells me to, this has been my highest view rate as far as like the length of time someone stays watching the video at like 19 minutes. That's not the full length of the video. But then I was like, I wonder if it's like Skillshare and it only calculates the time someone watches it even if they up the speed. Cause I would, I would totally up the speed of that video. I did to do the timestamps. I totally forgot to do them when I was editing it, which was kind of annoying. So I had to rewatch it for like the umpteenth time. My neighbor walked up to my door, it was cracked. And he was like, okay, see there's, that's why I don't think I could ever record video because I have to watch myself. I'm like, yeah, you got to pretend like it's somebody else. <laughs> you can't think about it. You can't think like, oh, that shadow is really unflattering on my neck. <laughs> Maybe I should have put on makeup today. <laughs> oh, anyway. All right, well, thanks guys. Um, FPM, what is FPM? So I, this is what I think. I think I'll sew some Christmas gifts this month with you guys. Um, I have a couple of Fairfields. Um, I have all those things I was mentioning to you guys. And so maybe the first two weeks of December, I'll have be sewing with you guys. And then after that, I, you guys didn't, did you guys see the machine vibrate at all then? Because I think I got that solved. I'm going to put a camera right here. I'm going to work on that. And I'm gonna work on that backdrop over there because I really want to record. Um, I got a hiccup. <laughs> I'm trying to like hold it back. <clears throat> I I'm gonna put a new backdrop so I can record how some how-to videos. So yeah, I know. Me too, Nancy. I actually kind of do too. Depending on what it's about. So all right, I'll see you guys next week. I think. All right, <laughs> and I'll see you Zoomers later on at four from Patreon. Thanks for coming, you guys. That was fun. And I'm so glad I got my um, Ames jeans done. So I think I'll do snaps. That's, that's what I'll do. I'll put some snaps. Oh, okay, cool. All right, see you guys. Bye.